How do you balance your consulting career with being a content creator? Did you like being a model or was it a toxic environment? Have you ever been in love? How did you learn how to edit your videos? Has living in New York City lived up to your expectations so far? Biggest change between your old firm and new firm. Do you love Matt Reif? I think you two are made for each other. Smartest, beautiful babies. <laughs> Hello, this is Taylor. Oh, Taylor, <laughs> new background? What? What's going on? What is that? Yeah, I moved. <laughs> But more details on that in some upcoming videos. They're gonna take a while to edit, full disclosure. But in the meantime, here's a little sneak preview, all right? Anywho, hey, I'm Taylor. For those who don't know me, I'm a 25 year old management consultant and YouTuber living in New York City. That's the Empire State Building, isn't that crazy? I'll give you guys the full tour soon, don't you worry. You know me and my apartment tours. All right, well, today we're gonna do a little Q&A. I posted on my Instagram asking you guys to ask me anything. I think I said ask my anything and that I would discuss in my next YouTube video. So that's what we're doing today. <laughs> I wrote them all down. I meant to write them down on my laptop, uh, but I was at a coffee shop and there were no outlets. My computer died. So I had to return to the stone age and write them down by hand. First question. I always like to start off with a little fun warm up question. <laughs> Who is your female slash male celebrity crush? Oh, I don't know. You're just a couple of Australians. <laughs> but seriously, long time crush. Both of these. These are. All right, number two, did you like being a model or was it a toxic environment? Sorry for that. <laughs> I'm gonna stop with the thing. So I was signed with LA Models while I was in high school. So I did that for about four years and I haven't really talked about it much on my channel. Maybe I should because I actually do have a couple crazy stories. But overall, in my experience, it was a very cool one. It actually taught me a lot of discipline, like going to all those castings in downtown LA after school. That just was like almost a full-time job in itself, whether or not I got booked for the job. But of course there were some strange aspects. I mean, to be evaluated primarily on your looks in general, but especially at a young age is very unnatural. And there were a couple small things that would have jarred me, I think, if I just didn't focus on other things. Like academics still always came first, but it was more like icing on the cake. I didn't expect it to be my full career. And again, I only did this for four years, so I can only imagine the amount of stories that people who have been in that industry for a very long time They've, they've probably got some crazy ones. <laughs> Next question. This is my most asked question in general. This is what my friends probably ask me the most. I just get this all the time. How is at this exact point where I would normally make the joke that my most asked question is if you would hit the like button for zero dollars. Um, I forgot to do that, however. And so I'm making up for it now. If you feel so compelled, <laughs> thanks. Okay, but the real question was, how do you balance your consulting career with being a content creator? Considering how much people ask me this question, I wish I had a better answer. <laughs> Short answer is I don't balance them. I do it through brute force and it comes down to me posting very seldom, like once every 40 days now on average, versus when I was doing YouTube full time between my two consulting jobs, I was posting like one video every eight, nine days. And that was a full time job in itself. The editing just takes forever. And now trying to layer that on top of a very demanding full time job at my current consulting firm, it's, yeah, I, I, to try to give you something that's helpful, I guess something that I do do is I'm always thinking about video ideas. I'm always writing down ideas. Sometimes I stay up thinking about them. Like, you know, so I always have these things in my mind, whether or not I have the time to actually dedicate to making that video. Overall, I just rely on having motivation when I do have free time and thank God I do because I still love making YouTube videos more than anything. And that's probably, you know, that's probably the answer is that because I love it so much, because it is such a passion that I still get it done when I have a little bit of free time. Kind of a lame answer, I know, I'm sorry. Next question, are you having more fun as a blonde? <laughs> you know what, I am. It has been a very fun past few months, but between you and me, I think that might have a little bit more to do with the weather warming up rather than me changing the color of my hair, but you never know. <laughs> has living in New York City lived up to your expectations so far? Living in New York City has far exceeded my expectations. You guys probably know this if you've seen my other videos, but I love it more and more every single day that I'm here. And I love the overall activities, I would say, that I do now compared to when I first moved here. So because of COVID, I didn't move here right out of college. It was a full year after I graduated. So that kind of accounted for some of this. But when you're like early 20s, I feel like it's just like go out, go hard every single weekend. And we still do plenty of that, don't get me wrong. But we also do, I don't know, when I say we, I mean me and my friends. But we also do other things. I would say like the activities that I partake in have diversified a bit more. I'm just like more comfortable with the friend groups that I'm in and the people that I really like to spend my time with. Anyway, yes, it has lived up to my expectations. I would say exceeded. And another question that I didn't write down, but I got a lot in the little question box was, 
if I plan on staying in New York City? And the answer is yes, for the foreseeable future. I don't have any plans to leave, which differs a little bit to the plans that I originally had when I first moved here. I kind of had it in my mind that I would stay like two, three years and then maybe scoot on back to the West Coast, but I'm at that mark now and I have no plans to scoot. Next question is, how did you learn how to edit your videos? I am 100% self-taught from tutorials on YouTube. So it's like YouTubeception, you know? To give you a little more detail on my journey with it, I taught myself the basics of iMovie when I was like 19 and started making funny little videos for like my dad's birthday. I would do little spoof videos and I found that I actually really enjoyed that. So when I started my YouTube channel, I took to the editing process more than any other step of the process of creating a video. So I switched from iMovie to Final Cut Pro pretty quickly just because I found that I needed additional capability for what I wanted to do in my videos. And they're both Apple products. So Final Cut Pro has a fairly similar interface to iMovie and and it was, I found pretty intuitive to pick up. And then from there, I just looked up YouTube tutorials for any edit that I knew I wanted to do, but didn't know how. And with every video that I make, I still try to teach myself at least one new skill, like one new editing technique. Yeah, I think editing is a very, it sounds cheesy, but I think it's a very intimate form of self-expression. Like taking raw footage of ostensibly nothing and turning it into the story, turning it into something worth watching, and doing it in a way that you kind of craft in your own brain. I just, I'm obviously very passionate about it. It's my favorite part of the process and it's probably why I have not hired someone else to do it for me yet. <laughs> Next question, have you ever been in love? Yes, I have. <laughs> I have not talked about that part of my life on my channel before, not really. I'm not sure I will, but maybe one day. <laughs> Next is, can you talk more about your current job? How has it been? It's been busy. Uh, timeline, I guess I've been at my current firm for about eight months now, which that time flew by. The project that I'm on right now is the most challenging one I've ever been on from an hours perspective, but also from a learning perspective and pushing my skill set. So anyway, overall, the job has been great. I've met a lot of really cool people. I'm like quite close to a good number of people at my company now, which is awesome. And yeah. Next one is, do you cook a lot? Guys, I kid you not, I cannot tell you the last time I bought groceries. Especially with the current project that I'm on now, we're talking Uber Eats or eating lunch in the office because they provide it every single day, which is a huge perk for every single meal. And then on the weekends when I do have free time, I'm pretty much always on the go trying to see my friends and we usually are just going out to eat. So yeah, I do not cook for myself anymore, which sucks because I actually really like cooking. But when I am at home and I do have some free time and I just need a little bite, I do love having some really quick, convenient options, which actually brings me to today's sponsor, Factor. So Factor makes it super easy to reach nutritional goals by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. I'm especially loving them right now while I'm in the moving process. Like, as you can tell, still very much getting moved in. So I'm just too busy to cook right now, but I still wanna, of course, make sure that I'm eating enough and eating healthy. This was me organizing my new kitchen earlier today. I felt a little tummy grumble come on, so I just popped a factor meal in the microwave for two minutes and it was ready to go. Bam. Factor offers a ton of options on the menu each week to fit a variety of lifestyles from keto to calorie smart, vegan plus veggie, and protein plus. You can also round out your meals and replenish your snack supply with their 45 plus add-ons, including breakfast items and then really cool like beverage options like cold pressed juices, shakes, and smoothies. I'm actually getting hungry just talking about this. So anyway, if you have an on-the-go lifestyle like mine or you just want to take the guesswork out of grocery shopping and meal prep, head to factor75.com or click the link down below and use my code Taylor. 50 for 50% off of your first Factor box. Again, that's factor75.com or just click the link down below. Use my code Taylor50 for 50% off. And thank you to Factor for sponsoring this video. Ooh, some golden light. Next one. Do you love Matt Reif? I think you two are made for each other. Smartest, beautiful babies. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, funny you should ask. His videos actually started coming up on my Explore page. He's a comedian for those who don't know. And yeah, I think he's really funny. Tell him I say what's up. Next one is, if I gave you $20 to buy snacks for a road trip, what would you buy? I'm obsessed with this question. I will be keeping this to gas station snacks only. My go-to is always, without fail, red sour punch straws, these exact kind. If they don't have these, I'm pissed. This is number one priority. Number two priority is caffeine of some sorts. I'll sometimes go for those like Starbucks canned nitro cold brew thingies, even honestly the Starbucks little frappuccinos in the glass bottles. Again, keeping this to gas station options. That's not what I would order at like a coffee shop. Don't judge me. Next, something salty. Rolled gold pretzels every time. A thousand times better than Snyder's or any other kind of pretzel and that's a hill that I'm willing to die on. And then I'll usually go for a blue Gatorade for hydration, some water, boring, I know. But finally, I'll go for a banana. I know for a fact that I have a picture of me holding a banana as though it were a weapon, most likely. On a road trip, gas station, somewhere. Next, consulting humor, who has great consulting memes, you should follow them 
asked me, biggest change between your old firm and new firm. This isn't a testament to a difference in the companies per se, but I started at my current firm in person versus my last one virtually because it was still COVID. So this time, just because I had that in-person experience, I just feel a lot closer to the company and most notably the people. Like I kind of mentioned, I'm very close with some of the other associates, which is an amazing part of the job. So that's the biggest difference from my personal standpoint. Next is, do you prefer East Coast or West Coast and why? Guys, besides New York City, which is my favorite city in the world, and the autumn leaves in New England and some really pretty beaches in North Carolina, West Coast, 100%. The nature and national parks in California, Arizona, Utah, Montana, Wyoming, Oregon, Washington, absolutely unbeatable, in my opinion. So because of the nature, and I'm also just from California, so California will always have my heart, you know? What is the most awkward question you get? Oh, I get a good amount of these. Are you considering moving into PE? Honestly, not at all. Um, I don't know what my next thing is. I'm still learning a lot in consulting, but over the last few years, my interests have definitely shifted. I don't know if they've shifted, but I have uncovered this passion that I think I've always had for media and production that I just didn't really get to test until I started my YouTube channel. So that's to say, no, I don't plan on going into the finance realm of the world ever, really. But so many of my friends are, you know, most of my close friends went to Wharton also, so that's just kind of how it goes and I still feel like pretty close to it because I'm always hearing about it but I do not plan to go into it myself. Editing on the train, forgot to film an outro, rookie mistake but until next time, turtle out. No, this is a lame answer. No, that's stupid.